Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. My name is Susie and I'm so glad that you're joining me today. I have had surgery about three weeks ago and I am finally getting around some. I just got home from work and I'm about to go do some physical therapy. And then I wanna get started on some spring thrift flips here in my studio. I'm gonna show you guys what I'm working with and what I pulled out of my stash and what I'm gonna be doing with some of these projects today. Okay, so I may not get to everything here in this video, but this is the stuff that I wanna get something done with. This is an old jewelry box that I had previously painted a long time ago and I had a, a uh, vinyl transfer on it. I just got bored with it and it really wasn't my style anymore. So I wanna see what I can do with that. Um, I've got one of these uh, metal planners that I want to make a floral arrangement with. Somebody's gonna have to tell me what this is, but it's wood and it was $2.99. I don't know, maybe it's a matchstick holder. You guys can tell me, but I'm gonna do something with it. I've got this odd candlestick here. And I have this, um, what is that, an artichoke? One of those artichoke things? Let me put my crutches down. Hold on just oh, I'm so tired of crutches, y'all. Anyway. I have this artichoke thing here. I paid $3.50 for it. I paid $2.99 for this candlestick. I also have this little box that mom gave me that I kind of like as it is. Y'all let me know if you think I should do something with it. Um, this is just a little Dollar Tree lantern. I thought it was cute. want to do something with that. I have a bunch of these pant hangers. These, like metal and wood pant hangers. I think these are old, but I want to do some kind of hanging artwork with these. I got this cute little basket. Um, I've got this little cutting board here that somebody had already done a stamp on, but I think I can clean it up and do a little something with it. I'm not sure what I paid for it. Not very much. Um, I don't even know what this is, but I want to make something out of it as well. It's just a wood tray. I think I'll make a sign. And then finally, this is ceramic. It used to be a lamp and I have already painted it and spray painted it a while back. Um, it's like a, a milk jug or something. So I think I'm going to put something on it. Maybe I got to clean up the paint some. And I want to do some kind of floral arrangement on the top. And so I wanna show y'all the products that I definitely want to use. I have not yet used this Birds and Bees stamp from the new IOD release. So I wanna use it. I love all these birds. And I don't know if you guys are aware that IOD has these um, folders and they are absolutely perfect for your stamp sets and they're not expensive either. They're very, um, very kind of inexpensive and they hold them perfectly. So I'm gonna use those. I have the spring decoupage paper from Roy Cycled. Had this a while and I have not used it yet and I've been dying to use this rabbit. And I am thinking that he is going to fit perfectly in there. I get my uh, decoupage paper from Sonnet, Sonnet's Garden Blooms, and I'll link her below. And we've also got the Melange Paint Inlay that has some bees on it as well that I thought would be very springy and a lot of florals. And then this is um, a last year transfer that I still have not used all of it. And luckily I have not used the bunny. So I definitely want to use that and some of these florals. So stick around and let's see how much of these thrifted items I can get flipped today. I'm so excited about this week's transformations. We're gonna start with these two metal items. Um, I love these planters, and a lot of times you don't even realize the beautiful detail on them until you paint them. First and foremost, always clean your, take your tags off and clean up your items. Looks like I paid about $3 for 
the floral tin, and I think it had some floral in it. I don't remember what it looked like. I took it out long ago, and this little candle holder was unique, but it was the only one. I am going to paint these both with two coats of Apothecary by DIY. Nothing says Easter and spring like Apothecary paint. It's definitely a favorite of mine and has always been. After the two coats of paint have dried, I am simply going to take a little bit of white paint and just dry brush it over the raised details of each of these items. Like I said, you have no idea how pretty those details are until you bring them out, and this is a perfect way to do it. Just I just dip my brush in the paint and then rub most of it on to the paper towel and then lightly go over the raised edges on the items. And I like doing this almost as much as I like white wax. They're very similar in the ways that they bring out the details. Then I sealed both the items with some clear wax and I'm going to do a floral arrangement in this one. I don't glue my foam down just in case someone wants to take it out later. It's tied in there, it's not just gonna fall out. So I just hot glued some Spanish moss and then mixed some green moss in with it just to make it look a little realistic. And then I'm gonna take some floral picks and I'm all about the pinks and the corals and the greens right now. I think they are perfect for Easter. And this pick actually came from Audrey's. It's a wholesale company where I order uh, florals and some other things every now and then wholesale. Um, they're really kind of a upscale floral. But I did mix in some other stuff with it and I just arrange everything. I kind of put the green on the outside and then I'm gonna put the flowers towards the inside. And I, every now and then I'll see something that looked a little too tall, so I cut something off. But you just play with your arrangements until you get them looking like you want them. Um, to me, it just works better to cut um, these stems down into pieces and then spread them out how you like them. But I'm in love with this colors and mixed with this apothecary. It's just um, really, I can't wait till Easter. <music> To the next project y'all i don't really don't even know what this is um it looked like some kind of handmade tray um i have already sealed this with some um polycrylic sealer i wanted to be proactive because i could absolutely tell that this is the kind of wood that's for sure going to bleed through so i think i did two coats of a sealer and let that dry really well and now i'm going to paint the whole thing front back sides everything with this white chalk paint. This is a Dixie Belle cotton. Um, it's just a really bright white. And we're gonna use this little bunny from the Roy Cycled Spring Paper. I think he's gonna be a perfect fit in here. So I'm just cutting out around him and I'm being very careful to save the rest of my paper for another project. They're so cute. There's a little lamb and a chick and some little birds in a nest. Um, can't wait to use them all. I gotta come up with something. But for now, I am going to uh, put this bunny inside this tray. I'm just gonna lay it in there and crease it with my fingers where I need to cut it down. And then I'm gonna cut it down and we are going to use Mod Podge to decoupage this paper onto this tray. 
Um, a lot of people have been using DIY liquid patina, and I don't have any. I need to get some because I think it will work really great. But I am getting better at decoupaging thanks to watching Sonnet do it from Sonnet's Garden Bloom. Shout out to Sonnet. Um, so I'm going to go in little areas, and I've just put the Mod Podge down, and then I'll rub the paper into it, and then put Mod Podge on the top, and then just continue to do small areas all the way down. Um, that's just the best way to avoid a bunch of wrinkles. all Mod Podge. I'm going to put it aside and I wanted to give a little more detail. This is the classic elements mold and I'm just going to use that little corner piece. Um, I just thought if I could put something um, on the tray in each of the corners that it would just give it just a little pop of details that it needed. So I'm going to make up four of these molds with the IOD air dry clay. Um, I probably should have done um, resin, but I ended up doing clay just because I thought it would be just a little bit quicker. But then I did have some problems with some breaking later on, but it was no big deal. I was able to get everything fixed. So I just did four of these molds and then I'm going to um, place them on the side of the tray and leave them overnight to dry. Most of the time I glue down and paint as um you know before the clay has dried but it's about 8 30 and i am exhausted and ready to get in the bed so i'm just going to sit these on in here and let them to dry and we'll come back in the morning to finish them up all right it is the next day actually the next night and these molds are dry now i gotta decide what color i want to paint them between the coral and the skeleton key and i have decided on the skeleton key i just think it's just the perfect blue gray color to go with the little bunny so i'm just going to paint each of the molds completely here it took one coat and a little touch up and then once I get them all painted, I'm going to glue them on the corners. And as you can see, I did break some of the whatever legs or arms on them, but it's no big deal. I'm using Gorilla Glue. I just glue them back together and let them dry overnight once more. After the Gorilla Glue had had time to set up good, 
I am just going to do like I did before and do just a simple dry brush of white over the molds. And y'all, how adorable is this bunny? I am in love with this. I put a sawtooth hanger on the back so it can hang, but it's also wide enough where it will just sit on the counter like a shelf sitter. So this piece used to be a lamp that my husband had had since he was a little boy. I took all the lamp pieces out and I spray painted it white a while back and then somehow it just got shoved in the back of my stuff. So I am gonna finish it up now. Um, I did put one more little layer of some white chalk paint on here just to get the you know, chalky texture that I wanted. And now I am just distressing it heavily with a 180 grit sandpaper. And once I get it distressed like I wanted, I'm going to seal it with a polycrylic sealer all over the entire thing. And then I'm gonna let the sealer dry completely. And I'm going to put this bunny from the Whispering Willow Transfer Pack. He fits perfectly right on this butter churn or, or milk bucket or whatever it is. I guess it's a churn. Um, and this uh, transfer goes on here super easy because I let the sealer dry really well that I had put on here and it was just very easy to rub this transfer on. Whenever you do a transfer, you also need to burnish it in. You can do that with your fingers. Um, I put the bunny on and then I also added a few other little greeneries and now I'm going to hot glue this uh, floral foam up top and I'm also going to glue a dowel rod down through the hole because there was a hole in the lamp too and just to make it look like a churn and I took the the dowel rod was new so I took some antiquing wax and just kind of stained it just a little bit and I have one of these um, spears um, half spears I guess that's what it's called of some holly leaves and I thought that it it actually went on perfect I did take in some more greenery and just fill in a few areas but I'm so glad I finally did something with this churn and I love how it turned out y'all let me know what you think about this and this remember this was a lamp and I wish I had a before picture of it but it really is an amazing transformation Okay, are y'all still hanging with me? We've still got lots of thrift flips to do. So this is the little artichoke that I paid $3.50 for. It's um, ceramic, I guess. Well, it's kind of light, so maybe it's resin. Um, I'm going to use this Coral Crush. This is a resin paint. It has a built-in sealer and everything. Um, it covers really well, so I'm just going to paint the entire artichoke with this coral. I love this color for spring. It's so vibrant and so pretty. So I ended up doing two coats of the coral and now I am going to do some white wax. I love the white wax, just like the um, dry brushing on top. The difference is, is the wax goes down in the lower parts where the dry brushing sticks on the, the, the top parts. Um, I wanted to do this on this because I wanted it to stay down in the crevices with the details, but also as beautiful as that coral is, I did want to tone it down just a tad and the white wax is perfect for that. What do y'all think about this color for spring? Let me know in the comments below. The more y'all comment, the more YouTube puts my videos out there. So I would greatly appreciate that. This little mini, teeny, tiny 
uh, cutting board. Someone had already painted the center of it white and did a stamp on it. I'm going to use another pretty spring color. This is a uh, yellow. It's also some more of that resin paint. And I'm just going to paint right over the white. It did take two and a half coats to cover the wording good. And then once that paint has dried really well, all I'm going to do is take one of the stamps from the birds and the bees. I started to do a smaller bee, but then I decided to go ahead with the larger one, even though it would stick out from the yellow just a little bit, um, because I just really wanted you to be able to see this little bee. I should have used a thin mail. It is a little bit easier to control your stamps when you have a thin mount on the back. Um, they just don't slide around on you. So you just hold it in place and then press down on all the areas of the stamp to make sure that your ink is coming off and he turned out pretty good. The only thing else I did was I took my ink pad and just went around the edges of the cutting board and I tied some jute twine and a tad of greenery on it and he is so cute now. I love this yellow color. Okay, did y'all figure out what this is yet? I'm still going with a matchstick holder, um, but I'm just going to clean this up, and I am going to take some sandpaper and just rough it up because I'm going to be using some milk paint on this, and I thought that that varnish might do a little too much chipping, so I'm just going to rough it up just a little bit, and I'm going to be using some sweet pickings milk paint in the color flower sack it's just a, a a white so with milk paint i have used it some but i don't know that i've ever used it in a video you do half hot water and half of your milk paint powder and then i stir mine for about a minute stir it up really well and then i just sat it around and i went upstairs and made me something to eat and ate and about 30 minutes later i came back and it had thickened up and i'm just going to paint this entire thing with the white milk paint now Milk paint is not like any other paint. When you're putting it on, you think, this is horrible. This is not going to work. But just keep going with it. It's super thin. You're going to get some ruins. Um, one thing is you, you don't want to work your milk paint too much. I try to stay in the same direction with my brush as much as I can. So I painted it all up, and then I am drying with the heat gun, and that will just promote some of the chipping and you can see that it'll also start doing some crackling, which I love. And I did two coats on it. See the crackle there? And then I'm going to turn it over and do the back as well. And one thing about milk paint that I'll tell you is I never know how much to mix up. So I always had some left over and I forgot I had this in my stash. This was not something I had out earlier. It's one of those um, old timey candlestick holders. Um, and I'm just going to do the same thing with it. I'm going to paint it entirely with the milk paint and then I'm going to heat gun dry it and then i'm going to do another coat on it and now this is the next day for both the items and you can see i got a lot of crackle on this one not a ton of chipping not as much chipping as i thought it would be but still it works out good so i am going to distress all the edges and i'm just going to promote a little bit of chipping as you can see there on the right, I also had enough milk paint to paint some wooden utensils that I had in my stash. And see how that's turned out? I wish you could, I'll show you the crackle here and just live it. But this one, the chipping on this one was magnificent. Um, it was just perfect. It was just falling. Actually, it was falling off a little bit more than I wanted it to, but I just kept... Uh, cleaning it up a little bit, and then finally, once I got all the loose paint off, I put a coat of sealer on everything just to keep it from chipping anymore.
Fish with the Bees from this stamp set. I wanted to I wanted to use a paint and lay, but I'm not sure how that would work with the milk paint. So we're just gonna stamp, just keep it safe. So I'm taking all the little bees and lining them up from larger to smaller. Then I'm going to pick them up with my thin mount. And the great thing about these thin mounts is the lines. So I lined everything up in that center blue line. And then once I turned it over, it was pretty easy to tell that all of my bees were not necessarily straight. So I fixed them and then I thought that I had grabbed the black ink, but watching, well, it says black on it. I don't know why, but I thought maybe I got the um, gray color because they came out so light, but maybe that's just how the stamp, the ink does on the milk paint. But either way, I absolutely love how this turned out. It was very, um, faint and very distressed and see you can see all the crackle there now so then i sealed this one up as well and once they were all dry i just tied the um, utensils up and stuck them inside this little holder i'm not sure what it should be used for but i'm loving the chippy milk paint on this one look at that how gorgeous is that Have you guys used milk paint? Let me know in the comments below what you think about it. Okay, so for me, the um, chipping and everything was the star of this project, but I did wanna put just a little something on it, so I just chose some of the French wording. I'm think this one came out of the brocant booklet. I have a giant two gallon bag full of transfer scraps that I use from time to time. And so that's what I put on this one. And y'all, this chippy goodness is so amazing. It's not for everyone and I definitely don't like it all the time, but for a piece like this, I think that this is absolutely perfect. Next up is this simple little basket, and I definitely want to use the little rabbit from the Florida Lease Mold. I am going to be using the Amazing Cast in Resin for this. This is so, so, so easy. It's one part A to one part B. Mix it up for about a minute and pour it. Don't leave it sitting around because it will set up and then you won't be able to pour it. Speaking from experience, and don't mix up a lot. Just mix up what you need. So I... I'm stirring it up really good, and then I'm just going to pour it in my molds. Try your best not to over pour, but if you do, you can take your little stick and wipe it off. I had just enough to do the little bunny and a couple of the little acorns I thought I would use, and then I had just a little bit left over, and I never waste resin. I can always pour it up, and I also have a little box where I throw... Um, um, castings like I have made up just in case so you can see some there that I have already made up of those flowers I thought about using them on this basket but then decided just to go with the bunny I want to keep it very Easter oriented here so this is about 10 or 15 minutes later. The molds are still just a little bit pliable. I didn't want them to get too hard. I wanted to glue them onto the basket when they were still just a little bit movable so I could press them down as need be. So that's all I did. I'm gonna use some Gorilla Glue and put on the back of my castings and then push them down onto the basket and give it some time to get set up. And then once I've got them glued and the Gorilla Glue's had a little time to set up, I took the whole basket outside and spray painted it 
with some white paint and then I brought it back in and I'm going to again do the dry brush method but I'm going to use this coral and I'm just going to go over lightly over the molds and then I decided to go around the edges not doing it perfect just lightly giving it just a little bit of color on the top and the bottom. So now this very plain little basket is a cute little Easter basket. Okay guys, we are almost there. Last project, I'm going to use these wooden pant hangers and I had still have some more of that chenille bedspread that I've been using forever. So I just cut them down to the size to fit inside these pant hangers. And I'm going to use a few scraps that I have and the other bunny from the Whispering Willow transfer pack and the orange bird. So I've just kind of tentatively placed them out how I want them. Then I'm gonna begin putting the transfers on. This is a very textured fabric. The transfers go on super easy on this chenille background. Um, I just put the bunny on and then I gave him a little crown and then I decided to do some greenery and some mushrooms. And the bird, I did another one for it and these were just a super easy. Now, when you are doing transfers onto a fabric, you really want to burnish them well to keep any of the edges from popping up, like say if the fabric gets stretched or something like that. You just wanna make sure that all the little pieces are definitely down on your fabric. And then I'm just gonna take some sandpaper to rough up the edges, just to, so it doesn't look like I just cut it with the scissors just to give it a little bit of distressing. And that's so easy. You put these paper, these back in the pant hangers and they're easy to hang, easy to remove and very cute and a conversation starter. Everybody loves these. What do you guys think? the most fun ever doing these Easter thrift lifts this week. You guys let me know which one turned out to be your favorite in this video. As always, thank y'all so much for watching. I hope that you'll like this video and comment below and share it with your friends. And most of all, I hope that you'll come back next week to see what I've got for you next. Thank you so much for watching and I hope y'all have a great night.